Apple recently announced it would expand its self-repair program to include M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro devices, adding Mac parts and guides to the catalog for the first time. So, if you have an M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or an M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pro, you can now repair these devices with Apple's blessing. But the process does get confusing and, even worse, expensive. So, sit back and relax as we guide you through the whole process, starting off with a little about the self-repair program. Just to be clear, everything about this program is unusual, from the website, which is very unlike Apple, to the prices, which are all over the place, to the toolkits that Apple rents out for a fee. And let's not forget that Apple would prefer us to bring our broken devices to one of its stores to be fixed, so this won't be a very pleasant process. But still, it is a direct solution from Apple, which means we finally have a place to find official repair guides and real parts. And this is huge because it includes parts and instructions for MacBooks. The Fruit Corporation has been known to brick devices that use non-Apple parts, which will always be an aggressive move against consumers. They've also kept third-party technicians' guides, making repairs much harder. And this makes the guides important to the self-repair program because they'll show you how to use each Apple product. The company also has listed all the parts and tools you'll need for each repair and how much each one will cost. So, how much do the MacBook parts cost? Instead of giving us a simple price list for all available parts, the company makes us enter the serial number of our devices and then go through a menu tree to find the right parts and their prices. This is a huge pain when you're just trying to find out how much it costs to fix things in general. For instance, we won't be buying many parts at their real price, and instead, Apple would be charging us an inflated price, sometimes a ridiculous amount of money, with the promise of a rebate if we send them our old parts. At the high end, an M1 Max board for a 16-inch MacBook Pro with 64 gigabytes of RAM and 8 terabytes of storage costs a whopping $4,222.24 up front and a $3,634.40 rebate. That means the board really costs $587.84, which is a lot less than the more than $4,000 that Apple asked us to put on our credit card at first. And most big parts are like this. An M1 MacBook Air board with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage will cost $526.24 at first, but after a rebate of $158.40, it will only cost $367.84. A trackpad costs around $95.92, but you can get a rebate of $17.60, which brings the price down to $78.32. Apple also charges $119.25 for a MacBook Air battery, and with a $22.50 rebate, the price drops to $96.75. On the other hand, simple parts are easy to understand. A broken antenna module will cost $15 to fix, and an audio board will cost $12, while a battery cover will only cost $4.50, but even then, we'll have to consider our tools. Next up is the repair program worth the hassle. If we need to take the bottom case off our MacBook Pro to change the battery or the keyboard, the kit required to do so will cost $300. $300. Moving on, a display press for a MacBook Air will cost $200, and the battery support and press plate will cost $99.50 if we want to change the battery. We'll also have to add up the cost of the tools Apple lists on the repair guide, that is, if we'd use those tools again. If the tool cost is too high, we might be better off renting Apple's repair kit for $49, as it comes with all the tools we need to make the repair, so we probably don't have to spend too much on the tools themselves. And yes, $49 adds up if we fix one MacBook a week, but this is probably the best choice for a one-time repair, especially a big one. We just have to send the kit back within seven days or else Apple might charge us an extra fee. Yikes. And finally, let's calculate what a MacBook repair would cost us. So, let's look at an example that shows how all of this works together. We need to get a new battery for our M1 MacBook Air. After entering all of our information, it looks like the battery will cost $96.75 if we send back the old one and $119.25 if we don't. As for the tools, we'll need a battery support frame and press plate, safe tweezers, an iPhone display press, and other tools that we don't 
don't own. We won't buy the tools because the display press alone costs $216. Instead, we'll rent them all for $49. So if we return the old battery and repair kit on time, we'll be charged $154.75. Yeah, sure, it's expensive, but it's probably less expensive than going to the Apple store, right? But on the official website, Apple says that the same repair for my MacBook Air will cost um $129. Okay, this program isn't worth it for most people and most repairs since we'll also have to think about how much each repair will cost. Maybe Apple's repair price is more than the cost of the parts and rental, so it'd be cheaper to fix it yourself. And also, if you're tired of having other people fix your things, you can try it yourself just to feel something. We wish you luck either way, but don't forget to return the toolkits you rented. Moving on to other related news. Firstly, iPhone 14 release date is confirmed. Apple has just announced its next press event on September 7th, and this is where, yep, you guessed it, new iPhones will be revealed. At the event, Apple will also reveal new versions of the Apple Watch and AirPods. There are rumors that the company is also working on new Mac and iPad models, which are often announced at a different event in October. The Fruit Corporation is expected to release four new iPhone models, which will be called the iPhone 14. As for the features, the camera on the new phones will obviously be better, and the more expensive iPhone 14 Pro versions may have a smaller pill-shaped cutout on the top of the screen instead of the notch that the current iPhones have. And to see if the company has raised prices during times of high inflation and uncertainty in the supply chain, analysts will be paying close attention to how much Apple's new products cost and note the price hike. Apple could also release new Apple Watch models, likely to be called the Series 8. There are rumors that they could add a body temperature sensor to this year's model for tracking sleep and fertility. That's insane. And for people who want to watch the launch event live, it'll be live streamed on Apple's website, just like it has in the post-pandemic climate. Next up, we have some good news for Samsung fans. In a blog post on Thursday, the company said that Samsung smart TV owners can sign up for three months of free Apple TV Plus from now until November 28th. But the offer is only for models from 2018 to 2022. To take advantage of the offer, you'll need to sign up by opening the Apple TV app on the home screen of your Samsung TV. As you might have guessed already, there are a few complications around the sweet deal. To be eligible, you must first sign up by November 28th. Secondly, you'll need to sign up for TV Plus for the first time. This means that you can't get this offer if you're already a subscriber or if you've taken advantage of another free TV Plus offer, like one of Apple's many deals. But regardless of this, the deal does sound too good to be true. And finally, LG's latest OLED Super Quick Monitor. With a screen size of 45 inches, LG has announced a new OLED gaming monitor with a refresh rate of 240 hertz. The Ultra Gear 45GR95QE, okay, full disclosure, we can't pronounce that. The new monitor is the company's first curved OLED display with a 240 hertz refresh rate. And it's a big deal because most OLED displays, even those with flat panels, are still limited to 120 hertz. Although the company hasn't revealed how much the monitor will cost or when it will come out, they plan to show it off at IFA in Berlin next month. As for the higher refresh rate, the display looks smoother and less jerky, and video games feel more responsive, especially when combined with OLED's near instantaneous response times. We can recall a few months ago when it was rare to find an OLED display with a refresh rate of more than 120 hertz, but with LG's latest 240 hertz OLED, that's definitely going to change. That's all for this video. What are your thoughts on the updated self-repair program by Apple? Do you prefer repairing your own or getting your gadgets from professionals? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.